an ocean of green that reaches further than the eye can see. And in the middle, the tallest research tower on Earth. The Amazon Tall Tower Observatory, or ATO, was built to help better understand how the rainforest interacts with the atmosphere and the soil beneath it. The project brought together scientists from Brazil and Germany. Researcher Rita Mesquita welcomes the international cooperation. The ATO Tower provides an opportunity as one of the national laboratories in Brazil that researchers can come from different fields and do the integrated research that needs to be done so that we can have a complete story of the role of the Amazon for climate events. Brazil's National Institute for Research in the Amazon, or INPA, is in Manaus, in the state of Amazonas. But it has laboratories, study groups and field stations spread all across the Amazon region. Ato was built deep in the rainforest. Environmental engineer Iago Santos lives in Manaus, but travels frequently to the Ato research site a 150-kilometer journey to the Watuma Sustainable Development Reserve. To get here is kind of complicated. We have to take a car and then we go to a dirty road with this car and then we get a boat and then we get another car. So it's something like seven hours to get here. The 325-meter-high structure taller than the Eiffel Tower, was deliberately built in the heart of the largest rainforest on Earth, in an area mostly unaffected by deforestation and far away from modern civilization. We need to do this in a really faraway place from huge cities to diminish our influence. The research site records meteorological, chemical and biological data, like the concentration of greenhouse gases. One of the incredible things that we work here and discover with more and more data, because we are in a long-term experiment, is that even the smallest beings here, the microorganisms that live in the ground, they can influence the whole atmosphere. Two smaller towers gather information from within the forest. This tower that we are, it's like 80 meters high. This is one of our tubes that is sucking air from the forest. So we have some of these through the tower, so we can measure a lot of gas. We are at 60 meters high now, so here we can see the difference in topography and other stuff above the canopy of the forest. We can also see the rain approaching. We are working in a rain forest, so we have to be prepared. If you are climbing a tower and start to rain, you have to go down because you are in the highest part of the, the landscape, so maybe a lightning can hit you. The Ato Tower collects data from a further distance. It can even measure particles of dust from the Sahara Desert that land here. The soil in the Amazon rainforest is poor, as rain constantly washes away its nutrients. But the dust from the African desert, which is rich in minerals, nourishes the land. Learning things like the Sahara Desert dust get here, or knowing how far the influence of the humidity that go out from the Amazon influence the whole South America, we can understand better how the whole biosphere is connected. So every part of the biosphere counts in the climate system. But of course, the Amazon is the biggest rainforest of the world, so it has a huge influence in the biophysical system of the Earth. Iago leads us to the top of the Ato Tower, a climb of 1,500 steps. In average, it takes from the floor to the top of the Ato Tower something like one hour. Some people just go for one hour and a half, but there are some crazy guys that go just in 21 minutes. It's a journey. <laughs> a relatively quick hike for Iago. He gets to the top in much less than an hour. We are here in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. We are at like 321 meters high. 
so we are much uh, much uh, high, higher than the canopy of the first. The Amazon rainforest is known for its capacity to absorb carbon dioxide, or CO2, through photosynthesis. When plants are feeding from carbon dioxide, they are at the same time releasing water. So the forest is always recycling its water. CO2 is one of the most critical greenhouse gases linked to climate change. Despite efforts to reduce emissions, they have significantly increased in the last years. If we keep changing the atmosphere composition like we are doing now, maybe the response of the forest is, is not that good as we think, because it's made from living beings, so it has its limits. The forest will not remain just absorbing carbon. It's like us. We cannot just eat food without drinking water. Fires and deforestation are making the situation even worse. A study published in the journal Nature suggests parts of the Amazon rainforest are now emitting more CO2 than they can absorb. When people put fire on the forest, we can measure the amount of particles in the air. We can see with our own eyes, actually, the amount of particles and smoke in the air. The Amazon rainforest is home to an estimated 10% of the world's known species. It's the most biodiverse region on Earth. Deforestation not only destroys entire habitats, but also could lead to the extinction of many species. Sometimes people look at this vast expansion of forest in the Amazon and they don't think there are so many creatures endangered here. When we consider that we are destroying parts of the Amazon, we are losing species that live in that part. So the connection of biodiversity and climate is super strong. Here is a simple uh, structure. Beyond the towers, Atoll infrastructure includes laboratories housed in climate-controlled containers. This is water that percolates inside the soil. We measure the carbon that is inside the soil. We are seeing how just a few centimeters below can make a huge difference to the carbon inside the soil. So we are now understanding better the, the influence of the microorganisms in the system. And this lab stores equipment to measure greenhouse gases. Every flask of this We'll collect a sample of air that comes from the highest part of the tower every week. We can... All the information collected here is stored in an online data bank, so researchers can access it across teams. With the data that our collaborators show is that we are pretty close to the tipping point that the Amazon is going to collapse by itself. I'm 28 and I'm already super concerned about my future. It's not a, a thing that we can say that is about the future because it's happening now. Half of the emissions that happened since the pre-industrial period to now were in the last 30 years. So the velocity that we are changing is super fast now. One of IMPA's crucial roles is to translate the scientific information for decision makers so they can make better choices about the future. We are seeing a series of uh, new movements and changes in the world that are putting different agendas and different priorities on the table. And IMPA needs to be able to communicate the importance of its results and at the same time sending out the alerts that society needs to receive because our decisions have consequences. And we know now that some of these consequences can be very harmful to, to humans. We depend on this forest, so the better we know about it, the better we can preserve it. And it can remain for the rest of our lives and our children's life and their children. Safeguarding the Amazon rainforest is not an easy task, but it is vital to the health of the planet. <laughs>